Well, we welcome each one to our weekly uh, worship hour, and we thank you today for your presence with us as we praise and honor Christ our Savior. This is the day and time that's set aside to honor all fathers, and may we realize that all we are and all that we hope to be as fathers is by the love, the mercy, and the grace of our Heavenly Father. Amen. With our call to worship this morning, please join us in singing the promise of God of a glad reunion day. Hymn number 680, Shall We Stand As We Sing Together. Our Heavenly Father, Father of all fathers, creator of all things, sustainer of all things, Lord, we are so glad that we can sing about that great reunion day. The day that we look forward to when all the family of God joins around your throne and praises our Father for the eternal ages yet to come. But Father, we are here in your house today and we are in need of a blessing. We're in need of a heavenly visitation. So may Holy Spirit visit with us this morning in a real way as we sing and lift our voices in praise and in honor and glory to you. And Father, as we look into the word of God, I pray, Father Lord, that you'd help us to find encouragement, to find blessings. Father Lord, from what you have to say to us today concerning fathers. Father, I thank you for my dad. My dad's already with you in glory, but thank you for the life that he gave and life that he lived and Father Lord what he done in my life. Thank you for all the fathers that are represented here today that are here. Thank you Father for every one of them. 
Thank you for their families that they lead. And Father Lord, for all the families that are united here today. Now, Father, Lord, as we go into this service, may everything be done for your glory and for your honor. Bless every song that's sung. Father, Lord, everything that's said, may it bring glory and honor to you. And when we leave today, we can say it's been good to be in your house. May we see the kingdom of Christ advance with the salvation of souls. In his dear name. Faith of our fathers live in sleep.
to take away my sins and save my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, and save my soul. Chapter 15, verse 11, of Father's love, or the Father's love. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. You might want to underline that little statement. He divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance on riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And would he, he would have faint have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have enough bread to eat and to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before, against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And his son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. I love this. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us be, eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing. And he said unto one of the servants, and asked what things these what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore the father came out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any of thy commandments, and yet thou hast never given gavest me a kid that I might be made merry with my friends. 
but thou but as soon as thy son hath come which was deliver which hath deliver, devoured his living with harlots and hath killed the, for him the, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that i have is thine and it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead is alive again and was lost and is found. May we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, what a great Father you are. We recognize you as our Heavenly Father. We recognize you as our great provider and protector. And Father, Lord, help us to glorify you this morning. But Father, from these ver uh, verses of text, I pray that we could glean something from here that we as fathers, as head of households, as head of families, could find encouragement, could find strength, Lord, to lead our families correctly. Father, Lord, do that this morning. Honor us with your presence. I feel the presence and the power of Holy Spirit in this place already. Father, my heart is just overwhelmed with joy, but yet also with grief. Lord, if there's anybody here today that needs to come with back to where you are as this prodigal son. Lord, may they find their way to an old-fashioned altar of repentance. If there's any that's never come to the Father's house and they're lost in sin, may they too find, to the, find their way to this altar of repentance and come to know Christ. Use this service for your glory. We honor you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Look with me at verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. What a, what a story. But it's a true story. It's an everyday life event story. Many sermons have been preached from this text. I've preached many times from this text. And most messages that you hear deal with the two sons. The younger son being the prodigal or the rebellious one who took from his father and left. Went into the world and to sin. And we could name some of the most horrible and corrupt things that he probably got into, but we won't do that. The other son... The older son was also rebellious, even though he stayed at the father's house. You could tell that by the scripture that we read. He had a rebellious, hard-hearted attitude. But there wasn't much difference in either one of these children, because if you remember, as we read at the beginning, he gave to them what came to them. Both of them at the same time received it. One went away and sinned. One stayed at home and sinned. The younger son represents the one that was down and just, just represents that down and out rebellious sinners. He lives a wild life and just lives life to its fullest of despair and destruction. The older son represents that pharisaical sinner who stayed at the father's house and tried his best to hide his sins. I'm going to tell you this morning, you can't hide your sins. First of all, God knows all of our sins. Secondly, try as you must and try as you can to hide your sins. You can't. Your sins will tell on you every time. But as I looked at this passage this week, I saw it in a little bit different light. I believe this passage has more to say about the Father than it does the sons. I believe it tells us more about the father and the love of this father than it tells us about the sins of the sons. Look with me again in verse 20, and we'll begin the message. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet great, a great way off, his father saw him. His father had compassion on him. His father ran. His father fell on his neck, and his father kissed him. Let's talk about the love of this father. A father's love is paternal and protective. 
A father's love is paternal and protective. His father saw him. He saw his son. A father who loves his children will always be on the outlook for his family. He'll always be looking for the best for his family. He sees what is going on at all times. In other words, a father is involved in his children's life. Very much involved. Even if they don't want you to be involved, be involved in their life. That's a father. It's been said that a mother has eyes in the back of her head. I believe mine did. I, I really do. I believe mama had a, eyes in the back of her head. She could see what I was going on behind her and never turn around and know exactly which one of us brats was doing it and call us by name every time. But a father looks in advance of his children's life. His eyes go beyond his children's age. His eyes go beyond his children's wonderings. He knows what his children are doing. And yes, at times he allows his children to get in trouble. At, at times he cannot prevent, even though he knows it's going on, his children from being bad, sinful. And he allows them to get themselves in trouble that they might learn from their mistakes. They might learn from their mistakes. This father could have said, son, no, I'm not doing this. You staying right at home. His son would have left anyhow. So his father in foresight saw what he was doing, knew what he was doing. But let me just share this with you. I believe from this text that the father knew where his son was all the time. All the time. He never lost sight. You see, the father's sons were this way, both of them. The younger said to the father, Father, give me that portion which falleth to me. And he divided unto them his substance. His father saw where they were, saw where they were going, saw what they were doing. And we'll find out in just a minute how he, how he worked with what they were doing. May I say to you this morning that our children may rebel. No, let me change that. May I say to you this morning that our children will rebel. They will break our hearts. They will stomp all over our hearts. As this young man did for his father. But God never tells us anywhere in his word that they won't do this. That they won't break our hearts. That they won't be mischievous. That they won't sin against us and against God. Nowhere in the pages of this book do we have that my, sin, my son is sinless. No, he says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He also says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He knows that our children will sin. We know our children will fail. We know our children will break our hearts. But listen, we have a promise from God. Listen, dads, listen, moms. We have a promise from God in, Pro in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. When he is mature, when he is growing. But may I say to you this morning, don't ever give up on your kids. Don't ever give up on your children. I said a while ago, once a father, always a father. Yeah, once a father, always a father. And you have the right to be concerned. Matter of fact, you have the God-given responsibility to be concerned about your children. Don't ever give up on them. Keep praying for them. Keep loving them. Keep being daddy to them. I pray with you about some of your children. We've been praying a long time about some of your children. We'll keep praying about them. Never give up on them because God says if you raise them right, if you raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord, if you teach them the, the pages, the promises of, the, of this book, the pages of this book, what God has for them and how they should live, when they are grown, they will not forget it. Many of you are sitting here this morning whose parents prayed for you, who taught you the word of God. You rebelled. I did. We all did. But when we got mature, we remembered daddy and mama's prayers and their teaching and their leading. Don't give up on them. They'll break your heart. 
but be paternal and be protective. Oh, yeah, they're going to sin. Just be there for them. Yeah, they're going to break your heart. Just be there for them. They're going to disappoint you. Yes, just be there for them. Take care of them. Somebody said, I don't mind telling who it was. It was my dad. My dad used to say, well, if one of my boys get in, get in trouble and get in jail, they can just stay there. One of my brothers got in trouble, got in jail, and the first thing my dad done was went and bond him out. I'd do the same thing. Protect them, take care of them, provide for them. Secondly, a father's love is a love that provides. It's a love that provides. The Word of God says in our text, and he divided unto them his living. He worked hard. He had to be a hard-working dad. Why? He had substance. He had something for his family. You see, a, fa a fa father who loves his family, who loves his wife, who loves his children. And by the way, Brother Bob Breeden reminded me something of something when he left me a message yesterday. He says, tell your sweet wife hello for me too because you wouldn't be a father if your wife wasn't the mother of your children. Listen, dads, be that husband you need to be. He says he provides for his wife, for his family, for his children. He'll not be a deadbeat, but he's not afraid of working hard to provide for the ones that he loves. A father who loves his family is a provider. He doesn't wish to take from anyone else. He doesn't seek to take from anyone else, but he works hard. He place, provides for them a place of living. He provides for them clothes. He provides for them food. He takes care of their necessities. Oh, I wish that we had more men who were men. I wish more men had godly principles who saw their children's needs and took care of them, who cared about more for their children than they did from their dogs, who cared more about children than they did from their cats and their pets, who cared more about their children than they did for themselves, who would do, per, do without if necessary that their children might be provided for. Paul tells young Timothy in 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if any provide not for his own, especially for those who are the household of faith, he has denied household, for his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You want me to tell you what God thinks about a man who's too sorry, too lazy to work and can? He says, you don't believe who I am. Wow. He says a man who is too sorry in work to, to work and provide for his family is an unbeliever. You see, all, believer, all believers believe in working and fathers to work for their families and working in the kingdom of God. So an infidel is that one who says, I don't need God, I don't believe God, I can do all things of myself. And they sit around and do nothing for God, nothing for family, nothing for children, nothing for wife. It's a sorry man. And you can repeat this old... Baptist preach if you want to. It's a sorry man that won't provide a place of living and substance and food and clothes for his wife and children. God says you're an unbeliever. Don't tell me you're saved. If you tell me you're saved, I expect you to live up to the word of God and provide for your family. And he says he's worse than an infidel. One who just turned his back on God. Who doesn't need God. You see, this father we looked at was protective and parental. And he was a provider. Thirdly, we see a father's love is quick-sighted. When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Oh, when he was a great way off, his father saw him. This is a beautiful description. Imagine with me for a moment the image of this father whose heart was broken by a rebellious and disobedient son. I said a minute ago, I believe that the father knew where the son was all the time. I believe he'd go out every day and look on his veranda or his porch. He'd put that old hand up over his head to block the sun of the morning. He'd look as far as he could see. Hey, wonder if Johnny's coming home today. Wonder if Johnny's coming home today. Wonder, wonder if he's coming. Is that him way down yonder? I've been praying that he'll come back. I've been trusting God that he'll come back. 
Let me tell you something else. This is, this is not in, in the text, but I, I really believe that the famine that the young man was in in a foreign country was the result of the father's prayers. I believe the father prayed that his son would have to be in a place of famine, that he'd have to come home. That's a whole different subject. But I believe one morning as he rose and he got out on his porch and maybe walked out on the hillside a little bit and he looked. There coming down, this, down the old dusty road was a sight that he hated to see, but he loved to see. There he sees his son. He sees his boy clad in rags, poor, bony, his hair a mess from sleeping with the hogs, filthy and dirty, dragging slowly down that road because he wasn't able to go fast. He had been starving himself to death. But yet that old dad, that's my son! Glory, hallelujah, that's my son! Servants, that's my son! He recognized him. And the joy overwhelmed him. The feelings of emotion just prompted him to go embrace his son. Oh, a father who loves his children will always, even if they break his heart, even if they tell him they don't love him by their actions, he'll always be looking. He'll always be on the lookout for the return, for the return and the safety of his son, no matter what he's done no matter where he's been. Father's son was this way, and when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to the citizen of that country. And when he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He got just about as low as he could get in the pig pens and the hog troughs of this world. Hey, you've been there. We've been there. We've been there. But every day, every day, I believe this father would look for that rebellious and sinful son to come down that dusty road. And every day he was ready. You see, why was he ready? Because he had a calf in the stall. You'll get that in a little bit. He was ready for his son to return. And it didn't matter one bit what condition his son came back in. He didn't ask his son. He wasn't expecting his son to come shaved and his hair cut and on a three-piece suit and looking good. Uh Uh-uh, it didn't matter. Just son, come home. Just son, come home. Not only is his father's love quick-sighted, but a father's love is sympathetic. He had compassion. He had compassion. Fathers, we need to be fathers of compassion. A father's love always allows him, even though he's suffering from a broken heart, caused by rebellious children, to still suffer with that child. His heart will be painful. He will feel the sorry, sorrow and the pity of that child. He always will. Father, if your heart's not breaking for your children that are wayward, there's something wrong in your heart. If your heart's not broken and you're not burdened about your children and grandchildren who are not living for God, there's something wrong in your heart. And if you'd rather fuss with them and fight with them than have compassion and sympathy with them, there's something wrong in your heart. The father was this way. He had compassion. But let me just interject something here. I believe what brought the old boy home was he remembered the goodness of the father's house. And when he came to himself, sin will take your father and you want to go, make you stay longer than you want to stay, and pay a price greater than you want to pay. But thank God you can come to yourself. 
when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house had bread enough to spare? And I lay down here in the hog pens perishing with hunger. I will arise. I'll do, do something about my stupidity. I'll do something about my sinfulness. I will arise. I'll get myself up out of here where I should never have been before. And I'll go to my father's house. And I'll humble myself and I'll say to my father, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And before thee, remember kids, if you ever sin, it's going to be against God, even if it's in your father's house. All sin is transgression of God's divine will and order. He says, I'll humble myself. I'll confess my sins. I'll say to my father, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. <coughs> Make me as one of thy hired servants. And not only did he say he was going to do what he's going to do, he done what he said he was going to do. He arose and came to his father. And when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. had compassion. Old dad's heart was broken and he had lived days and months and maybe even years and oh I wish little little junior would come home. I wish he'd come on back home. And when he saw him, he says, My heart breaks for him. I'm going to go and love him 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 and love him. And he ran fell on his neck and kissed him. He had compassion. It's time we need some compassion of fathers. We need to show compassion to our children from the time that they're born until the time we leave this world. We need to love them. <coughs> a, father's love, a father's love is eager to help. Two little words tell me that. He ran. This is opposed to the manner in which the son came. This is a direct opposition to the manner in which the sun came. You see, the beauty of this picture is greatly heightened by the circumstances. The sun, in all of his sins and embarrassment, and sin calls you shame and embarrassment. But the sin, in all of his shame and embarrassment, came slowly. Came slowly. But the father ran. He looked, he saw, he ran, he hastened. The love and the joy of this old man was so great that he hastened to meet him and he welcomed him home. He ran to his son. He says, son, I'll meet you more than halfway. I'm going to tell you, dads, meet your children more than halfway. More than halfway. You see, you've already been down that road. Amen? How about meeting your children more than halfway? A father's love is a love that gives all. <clears throat> he fell on his neck. He had compassion. He ran. And he fell on his neck. A father's love allows him to give all, even himself. His father fell on his son's neck in order to protect his son from others. You see, according to Jewish law... You can go back in the Old Testament and look according to Jewish law when a son does what this son done and he's been rebellious and he, he really just looked at his daddy and says, I wish you were dead. That's what he done when he came to his father. He says, I don't, wait, I don't want to, to, to wait till you die to get my inheritance. I want it now. So I, to me, I wish you was dead. And so when a son is so, a child is so disobedient according to Jewish law, when he, when he is seen again on sight, he could have been stoned to death. Oh, the wages of sin is death. Punishment is hard. But his father saw him. He ran to him. He fell on his neck. He put himself between his son and others. He put himself between son and others. Dad, that's what your job is. To put yourself between your children and others that would heart, hurt them, that would harm them, that would do them harm and do them hurt. Put yourself there. Fall on their necks. Protect them. You see, a father's love will cause, uh, uh, the father's love will cause a father to place himself in danger or hurt rather than to see his children hurt even though they're rebellious. Even though they're rebellious. That's a father's 
His love causes us to give all. A father delights to forgive and restore. A father's love delights to forgive and restore. He kissed him. He kissed him. A father who loves his children will, is always delighted to forgive them, even though they have broken his heart and stomped on it, caused him grief and sleepless nights and pain and hurt and sorrow. A father always forgives. If your children comes to you and say, I'm sorry, say you're forgiven. Show them that forgiveness. Show them that heart of compassion. Show them that love. There is nothing that a child can do to its parents but what you ought to say, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. A father's love delights to forgive, not only to forgive, but to restore. To restore. This is a sign of affection and reconciliation. This must when the father ran to him and had compassion on him and kissed him and fell on his neck and kissed him, this must have immediately removed the doubts of his son about the willingness of the father to forgive him. He met him more than halfway. He had compassion. That son, I, I, that old son that was just dragging down the road, his heart began to say, boom, 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 boom. And his, uh, his mind must have started going, My daddy does love me. My daddy does love me. I am going to be welcome home. At once, his father was this way. You know, I told you I was expecting, he was expecting him to come. Listen to this. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Bring the, and put a ring on his hand and put shoes on his feet. He didn't look at the sun and said, go over to the creek and bathe and then come into the house. He says no to the servant. Go get the best clothes that I got. Put it on him. And by the way, I looked up just some re references on this and in that particular time, the best robes of the family also had a covering for the head. So when he put that best robe and he covered that old dirty filthy hair all you could see was the glow in the sun's eyes all of his sins were covered all of his rebellion was covered bring forth a fatted calf why was he in the stall because daddy knew the sun was coming he was preparing for it let me tell you fathers always prepare for your children's return always be ready to welcome them home Bring forth a fatted calf and kill it, and let's eat and be merry. For this is my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. There's no better time in a, fa in a family's, in the home of the family, is when children comes back to where they need to be. A father's love has no favorites. Listen, a father's love has no favorites. A father's love is equal to all of his children. He gave both of them. His, their substance. The older son was full of jealousy, but his father looked at him and says this, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and you have all, all that I have is thine. It is meet that we should be merry and be glad, for this thy brother is dead and is alive and was lost and is found. He treated all of his children the same. Dads, don't make differences in your children. They'll pick up on it in a hurry, but love them both, love them all the same way. But I'll set all this. Now let me tell you this. What we read today is not just about an earthly father and his children. But the story that we read here, the example we had read here is representative of God's love for us. You see, I tell you this morning, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, God's love is paternal and protective. God sees all. We can't hide anything from Him. We can't hide anything from God. He knows where we're at, when we're doing it, what we're doing. The psalmist writes, O oh God, Thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from Thee. 
And I say to that, even though God, our Father, knows our foolishness and sees our sins, He still loves us. Amen? He still loves us. I'm so glad that I have a God that knew me when I was in my sins, in the muck and mire of this world, and He still loved me so much that He called me His own. He saw me where I was. He came to me, and He gave Himself for me. Aren't you glad? Give Him praise and glory. God's love is quick-sighted. Hey, God's love is quick-sighted, just like this father. God is always ready for his children to return to him. Always ready, right now. Isaiah writes in 44, 22, I have blotted out as a, thick, as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. He says, listen, I forgive you. I see where you're at. I'm quick-sighted. I know where you've been. I know what you've been involved in. But that's all right. Come on home, because I've already blotted out your transgressions. I have forgiven your sins. I took them all away from you. And it's just time for you to come home to the the Father's house, get right with the Father, do what you need to do because the Father has already seen where you was, he saw your sins and he still loved you. If, he, if you appreciate that, give him praise and glory. God's love is compassionate. God's love is sympathetic. The psalmist writes in 145, 8, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great to mercy. Oh, I love my God. God's so great. You see, he saw my sins. He saw my foolishness. He knew where I was, but yet he had compassion on me. He could have destroyed me and let me go to hell in my sins. He could have not showed his grace and mercy to me, but he chose to reach down into the marry clay of this world, pick my feet up out of that marry clay, save my soul, set me on the rock of Jesus Christ, establish my goings, give me grace and mercy beyond, beyond imagination. He, wasn't slow, he was slow to anger, but he was great to love. He was slow to anger, but he was quick to show mercy. He was slow to anger, but he was great to forgive. I'm saying this morning, friend, that God is a God of great compassion, and it's the goodness of the Father's house that brings one to repentance. I'm so glad I remembered one day the goodness of the Father's house. He opened the door. He met me more than halfway. He come down that road of dust and dirt where I was, and he says, welcome home, thou disobedient child, but I'll make you not only a servant, but I'll make you my son, the child of the king. King, I'll place you in the family of God. I'm so glad we have a God that is full of compassion and mercy. Give him praise and glory. Well, glory. Listen, I'm so glad that I have a God that is so eager to help. He ran. Listen to this. Psalmist writes in 3740, and the Lord shall help them and shall deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. I'm so glad that I have a God who was wanting to help me, who was desirous to help me. Oh, regardless where I was and what I had done and how much sin in my life and how far I had went into the, into the depths of this world, into the hog pens of society, regardless what I had put in my body, regardless what I had done to myself, regardless the hurt that I had brought to him and to everybody around me, he was willing to run to me. He came to where I was. Why? Because I couldn't go to where he was. Hey, listen, and he delivered me from the wicked. He took me out of the world of sin. He took me from the, from the leadership of satanic powers and from demonic demons of this world. And he saved me. He born me again. He took me from where I was into the, into the family of darkness and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son, into the kingdom of light. Why? What did I have to do? Just trust him. Just trust him. He's looking for his children. Are you wondering in this world? If he, if he has redeemed you, if he's delivered you, give him praise and glory. Wow. But listen, my God, 
gave his all. Amen. God's love gives his all. He fell on his neck. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his firstborn, Amen. the first of creation, that whosoever believeth trust in him should not perish, should not go to hell, but shall have everlasting life, spend eternity with him. I remember the day. I remember the day just as plain as it was yesterday that in sin, wickedness, defilement, ready to drop off into hell, God came. God came. He fell on my neck. He protected me. He didn't allow me to go to hell. Amen. I remember sitting, and I can tell you exactly it is, five pews back on the right side of the old Cola Baptist Church in a theater seat, those seats that would fold up. Paul Phipps from over in West Jefferson, North Carolina was preaching. I don't remember what he preached. But I remember the heat and the fires of hell licking at my feet. I remember seeing who I was in the light of who God was. And I remember getting out of that old pew, walking, running down to an old-fashioned altar and saying, God, take me as I am. Keep me from going to hell. And I felt the presence of the sweet Holy Spirit of God, and I've never, never lost that presence since, but I felt the presence of the Spirit of God wrap his love of arms around me as the Father and, and lay, upon himself, lay himself upon me and say, you're my son. Hell can't have you anymore. Sin can't have you anymore. Wickedness can't, wickedness, wickedness can't have you anymore. You mine, you're mine, you're mine. He gave his all for me. And if he's given his all for you, give him praise and glory. In God's love, God's love delights in forgiveness and restoration. God's love delights in forgiveness and restoration. He kissed him. Luke, Christ says this in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Forgive, wipe away. Restore as though I had never sinned. You see, when God restores my, me, when he restored me, and when he restores a person, he takes that old sin, the word of God says, and places it in the depths of the sea. As far as east is from the west, he removed your sins. He put them behind his back, he never to remember them anymore. I'm going to tell you, when God saves and when God restores, he does it completely and fully. He welcomes us home. I tell you, I'm so glad for God's forgiveness and for his restoration. How about you? Give him praise and glory. Now you may say, preacher, that was okay for you. That may be okay for some of the other folks in here, but how about me? You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. Listen to this. God's love has no favorites. God's love has no favorites. For the, neither Jew nor Greek, for, the, for there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye all are one in Christ Jesus. God is long suffering to us. God is the Lord. The, the Lord is not slack concerning, concerning His promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. You haven't done anything so bad that God won't forgive you. You haven't done anything so bad that you can't come home to the Father's house. You, can't, you haven't done anything so bad that there won't be rejoicing in the Father's house when you come home. Oh, how great the love of God. How great the love of God. Give Him praise and glory. Stand to your feet this morning.
Stand to your feet. Honor him by giving him praise and glory. What a great God we serve. What a great God we serve. What a great God we serve. God is the only perfect father that has perfect love. We fathers, we fathers, with all of our failures, should strive to love our families as God loves us. In scripture, in the scripture today, God gives us a picture of himself in order for us to know how to love our children our wives, our families. With God's help, let us love our children as God loves them. That we might see God, that they might see God's love in us and know his love in their life. Jack and the ladies, would you come, heads bowed and eyes closed for just a moment. We're going to have a multifaceted invitation today. I won't give an invitation this way. If you were a child today of rebellious against your father God, there's an altar here for you. There's a place for you to bow and your father will meet you there. Dads, why don't we just get our hand a hold to our wives and our children, and, and in just a moment after we pray, why don't we lead our family to down here and we'll just close with a family prayer in just a minute. But if you need to come, come. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that if there's one today that's in our midst that needs to come home to the Father's house, may they right now, without hesitation, without reservation, Right now, would they step out from where they're at, come to an old-fashioned altar, come home to the Father's house, knowing that you're going to forgive them, you said you would, knowing that you're going to restore them, you said you would, knowing you're going to, re- re- knowing you're going to love them regardless of how bad they've hurt you. Father, would they come? Then, Father, help us fathers to be fathers, husbands and wives, husbands and, uh, to, uh, to our wives and fathers to our children lead our families the way we should in Christ's name. Thank you for being my father in Christ's name. Amen.